Hello, my name is Chris Kiak. I'm with Kiak Technology Solutions. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating VREX, uh, which is essentially a virtual reality collaboration software. And I am on my Oculus 2, uh, uh, Oculus Quest 2 headset. Now, basically what we can see here is we have a model that has both a point cloud in it as well as the building information model. And this model is created in Tecla Structures. And I want to say thanks uh, to Lee Snyder with Trimble for providing me this uh, actual uh, Trimble office building that's in Colorado as an example for me to review and to look at. Now, what's great about this is there's a lot of different features. Now, uh, this application specifically is tethered. Now, what does that mean? That means I'm actually plugged into my PC, uh, the graphics processing unit, and my computer is doing all of the major processing and computing for what I'm seeing here. Um, whereas some other apps may be uh, untethered, which means that there's a native app on the actual headset itself. In this case here, uh, for this high fidelity model, um, I am tethered in and it is uh, plugged into my computer. All right, so let's start with some of the basic things here. Now, there is a really cool um, and easy to follow tutorial that guides you through. So when you first start, um, but you basically have a tool suite here um, and you can open up these different menus. So when you click on the icons or, you know, using your joystick, uh, basically you can see these different things. And when you hover over it, it kind of tells you what you can do. Now, um, let's say, for instance, if I was in a meeting with multiple people, I could laser point to specific spots and everybody could see that basically, which is really good when you're trying to you know, point to something and explain it, especially from a little bit of a distance when you're working with everybody. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually zoom in down here. So I'm just pressing forward on my right hand. Um, basically, wherever you hover, if you basic, uh, you know, it's kind of like the placeholder. So if something is colliding, you know, wherever your pointer is at, it's going to zoom you to that location where you're pointing if you just press forward. And also there's really nice, um, essentially, uh, kind of, uh, what I'd say tool tips, um, here, basically it's, it's kind of hard to use a normal PC language when you're talking in a virtual reality environment. Um, but here it actually kind of shows you icons. Uh, I can just rotate left and right and then back and forward basically with the joystick. So pretty easy navigation. Um, there's also a variety of different uh, types of navigation. So when you're in a big building, sometimes uh, teleporting, so you press forward and it's gonna teleport me to that location. You can control the speed of this as well. Um, and then you have uh, some different options here for controlling how you navigate. So smart navigation is pretty handy because this just allows me to sort of fly around, um, go to different spots and then do the rotations and things like I was showing before. Now, one thing that's really nice too is that um, I can see the point cloud. So this is this is unique in that the point cloud, um, I don't know of any other service that can show the point cloud and the 3D model overlaid together. Um, so this is really fantastic. Now, one thing we can control is essentially here with the layers, we can turn uh, different models on and off. So we can have multiple models. And in this case, this is an IFC file. So what I love about VREX is that they're actually committed to open BIM and the Building Smart Alliance and it's not just an enclosed ecosystem of one particular software vendor. So we can control our uh, 3D scans. So we can actually turn these on and turn them off. And we can add multiple models. Um, basically we can set that on the PC uh, or the computer application to determine which models that we're gonna see. Now I don't believe that there's any control of placement. Like so for instance there you can see up at up top that I have my other point cloud that's uh, 100 feet up in the air. So there isn't like a merging or alignment functionality here. Um, but basically if you had everything all in place uh, for a common BIM origin point for your models, you can load multiple models at the same time. Now, if I, let's actually zoom in here. So let's say I wanted to mark up something. Um, basically I can do uh, drawing. Um, so you can control color palette here. Um, you can just kind of draw free in space. Um, then you can also sort of control like the sizing of it. Um, you can also say draw on model. So if I'm drawing on model, then what it's doing is it's looking again where the pointer is colliding with a solid surface, and then it's essentially drawing there. So freehand versus drawing on particular surfaces. So this is pretty neat. Um, then also we can come here on the object level and we can select on those objects and then it'll highlight basically those, show that particular color. This is really good, especially when you're communicating with people. Um, so that way you can essentially say, hey, this is, this is what I'm talking about versus just the pointer. You can then hide objects and then you can unhide um, objects. So if you say reset all, everything goes back to normal. 
So essentially that's what we have there with the object controls. You can measure, um, so there's a measure from a particular surface. So we can go here and essentially it shows that there across. You can control the display. So let's see if there's a feet. I suspect that'll give me feet and inches. Okay, so it's decimal feet. So it looks like they don't have a 16th mode. So that's something I'll have to check into. Inches, yep, so it looks like it's all in decimal. So you got measurement there. And then you can go from uh, A to B. So you can pick like basically two points, which is pretty handy. So wherever it's snapping to, you can kind of measure that distance there. And then, um, you know, you can trash these or get rid of these as required. And then now let's go over to camera. So this is where we can actually take snapshots. So I can come in here and take a snapshot. And then what we can also do is we can actually link those over into uh, comments. Um, so here there's this issue manager and you can actually link uh, the BCF format, which is again, a great building smart initiative to allow comments and uh, snapshots to be passed across uh, different uh, BIM viewing platforms. And so here I've got uh, essentially, this is on my computer and it's just storing the BCF zip files there. And then I have these issues and I can kind of click on these. I can go to viewpoints and I can tell myself to teleport there. So it actually brings me to this specific location. So here we can actually see um, the information. So let's go back up to the info about this. And it looks like the long slots in this clip angle need plate washers. Okay, probably true. If that's a structural application, those long slots can't have just standard washers there. Um, all right, so this is pretty neat. Then you can actually come in and add additional comments. So one thing I really like about this is that there's the ability to do the multiple comment workflow. I actually opened this up over in Tecla um, as well as another a collaboration software to just see if the BCFs were working and it's bi-directional and it is. So I can do comments here. I can author the comments and the issues and then I can view them in another application and I can add comments and then bring that and see that actually here in this environment as well, which is really handy. So you can, uh, you can actually speak. Uh, you can do like um, where, hey, I'm just describing the issue and it'll do voice to text recognition. It's not perfect, so sometimes I have noticed that I have to edit some of the comments and description when I actually get over onto my computer. Uh, but you know, for the most part, the, the gist of what I was trying to say is communicated there. Now, one other cool thing here um, before we go is the ability to clip in the model. I, I actually like this. This is a pretty big deal. Um, there's a clipping cube around you that you can turn on, which will clip as you kind of walk through. But you can also set clipping planes uh, basically in three different axes or directions. That's really handy if you want to get inside walls, just like this. So if you have a, a concrete building or a lot of interior walls, and you're trying to clip through basically the building, you can just drag this and move this across. This is a pretty big deal. This is an important feature, and it saves a lot of time versus having to just hide um, objects and turn them on and off to see inside of walls. Plus, I like to see the full context of a wall, even if I'm looking in a cross section or inside of it. So you can, again, do this in three different directions or three planes to essentially clip your model and kind of create a clipping box. You can also control the distance at which you see objects. Uh, so if you don't have a supercomputer or if you don't want to be overwhelmed by the entire model and everything, you can set a view distance of how far away objects are displaying uh, compared to where you are at in the model. You can also invert this. So now the clipping plane is inverted. So if I actually... Uh, you know, go on the other side of this, the clipping plane is there and clipping on that side. So pretty cool functionality here. I mean, honestly, um, for collaboration to be able to, you know, track issues like I just showed, um, to easily kind of take snapshots, clip the model, do markups, pretty much all of the basic functionalities are here. Very easy to navigate, very easy to walk through. Performance is pretty good. I don't feel any kind of shakes or anything, um, you know, like basically with the headset. So again, it is dependent on the computer. So you want to, you know, the computer is doing all the processing, but uh, definitely a cool application.